So now, in this video, we're going to look at, it's a pretty simple circuit, PNP bipolar junction transistor switch. So you get a little bit of emitter to base current, although the emitter is lower on the breadboard right there, so positives down lower, even though it's up higher on the schematic. And uh, you get a little bit of emitter to base current when the switch is closed, that allows a lot more current to flow from emitter to collector right now. So right now, the PNP bipolar junction transistor is cutting off the voltage from our load and uh, now basically it's letting so much uh, current flow through that um, it's letting more current flow through than what the load will limit so ultimately the load will set uh, the current the load is what's setting the current right now not the transistor now the transistor cut off the voltage so there's no current it's limiting the voltage and um, you can see on the power supply about how much current we got so these are uh, one watt LEDs, and um, I don't know if I didn't have the switch pressed right or not. That should be uh, higher than that. So let's uh, kind of adjust our connections and see. Should be like four four fifty right there. I'm surprised it's uh, that low. I think we got a little bit of a uh, disconnect. But in any case, there we go. Close enough, right there. We have the circuit right there. PMP bipolar junction transistor. This is a higher wattage transistor though. That's the main thing. That's what I wanted to use this for. So we could probably still use the uh, uh, 2N2907. Pretty sure I said that part number right. Um, it's the PMP version of the 2N2222, which is a really common NPN bipolar junction transistor. Last uh, a video or two, we saw the TIP31C and that one is the NPN version of uh, this transistor right there. So they have basically the same electrical properties, but chemistry is opposite. So current flows through them opposite. Use PMP when you want a high side switch or closer to the positive supply. NPN would be a lower side switch compared to the load. That's the main thing to remember. Whatever you can make with an NPN bipolar junction transistor, because uh, they are more common, you can also make with the PMP, but you gotta remember polarities are opposite. So we have the pin layout there. Left pin is base, middle pin is collector, and right pin is emitter. The collector, this uh, metal uh, pin in the middle right there, is actually electrically connected. It's like a single piece of uh, metal, basically. And um, so whatever you connect to this tab, you're also connecting to that collector pin. Something to be aware of. So the left is the emitter, and there you can see when I touch the collector, and it bumps something else, um, we got a short circuit, so you gotta be careful. And uh, we got the emitter on top, uh, or the base on top. It's the left pin, base, and then uh, we got the collector in the middle, and emitter is on the right, but it's on the bottom there to the uh, positive supply. So it's different uh, than what you see a uh, wire there. You could rearrange this so that um, the different terminals are facing different directions than what you see here, but um, usually people don't. Usually they use it uh, like this. We got positive down bottom. When I close the switch, it works its way up to negative right there. Usually I work positive up down to negative, but in this case I'm doing the opposite just to make it easier to see what we're doing on the board. If I was actually wiring this up to be a practical circuit, I would wire it up uh, differently. So, in any case, we have about uh, 400 milliamps of current as we saw and um, so obviously I want to make sure this could handle at least 500 milliamps of current and it can that's the collector current up to 3 amps of current so especially as a switch I don't think we need the heat sink right there so basically it cuts off the power to the load when it is off so there's no uh, wattage there as far as the transistor and the rest of the circuit is concerned. When you turn the transistor on now, so there you can see that the load is on. If we measure the voltage, we would probably see all five volts other than a little bit of loss is across the load. The transistor should be conducting as good as it can, better than the load right there. So current's passing through pretty freely, probably not much voltage across it. So if there's no voltage at all across it, there's no wattage. It's not going to heat up at all. It is going to build up a little bit though. It's not a perfect conductor. Um, but again, probably not going to get terribly hot as a switch. But if you're using it to actually limit current, it's going to build up uh, voltage across it. 
and then you got to worry about the uh, wattage so I didn't write wattage on here I wrote with the heat sink for the uh, TIP 31 see the NPN version on the uh, other diagram I drew that it could handle 40 watts with the proper heat sink again this doesn't even have a heat sink I put away the other one but uh, my heat sinks are kind of small but they do still help dissipate heat a lot be aware of that um, but in case this is a PMP bipolar junction transistor that I have from a kit with a bunch of different transistors and other transistor like components you know they, they basically look like this but you know they got some other functions than the transistor um, but in any case they got three terminals and uh, so that's where I got uh, these transistors out of out of that kit and I bought the heat sink separately you can get you know relatively small heat uh, sinks for not too much uh, money if you buy them in bulk and they got a little screw that uh, screws into the, the hole right there so we have uh, the two LEDs we don't have to you know light both of them we'll come back so there you can see they get about five volts across and now I got that higher uh, current it's kind of interesting so these haven't been lit very long they get really hot this heat sink does if they've been lit for a while be aware of that but yeah we can just light light one there and uh, we could put more in parallel and um, you know we'll just have more current flowing and uh, I think uh, maybe even without a heat sink since it's just a switch on or off completely you know you may be able to get close to the uh, three amps of uh, collector current right there I'd probably stop at like an amp and a half I try to stay about uh, halfway below the maximum as much as possible and uh, as you got more collector current you're gonna need more base current to make sure the transistor saturates turns on fully um, but you can put about one amp uh, through the base right there so I don't think this is a high gain uh, transistor I don't uh, remember but in any case if uh, the load's not getting the full voltage across it you're not getting a uh, full current through the load uh, good chance you're not passing enough uh, emitter to base current right there but I'm pretty sure we are um, right now so uh, 5 volts 1 watt that's uh, wattage is voltage times current so that'd be 5 volts times 0.2 amps you do the math in amps 200 milliamps it equals uh, 1 right there 5 times uh, 0.2 is 1 so these are passing about 200 milliamps of current uh, not perfectly right there they're resistor based and uh, uh, you got the LED it drops some uh, voltage and then I think it's a 6.8 volt uh, resistor on there I know you can't see it but it probably can't see it but it says 6 R uh, it says a uh, oops I had it upside down that's the problem yeah it says a uh, 6 R 8 on there R means uh, resistance but it's kind of like the omega symbol it's in the middle because that's where the decimal point would go uh, 6.8 ohms um, R for ohms basically resistance uh, so they put the R where the decimal point goes because you probably won't see a decimal point on a little component like this I can actually see it pretty easily with my eye but the camera doesn't uh, pick it up uh, terribly well the way that I uh, was showing it right there um, so the resistor is what sets the current based on the voltage so you got to put 5 volts across it I have a uh, 12 volt LED that's one reason why I don't make uh, many of these uh, schematic diagrams anymore uh, a little bit after I bought these modules I had to attach the wire to wires didn't come attached um, I got uh, 12 volt to 24 volts you can change the voltage across them it lowers the voltage across the LED and conserves power in the process um, these are just resistors they accept whatever voltage you put across uh, the uh, little module there and um, you know sets the current based on the voltage more voltage more current and uh, the other LEDs that I got you put more voltage it requires less current from the power supply because it converts that extra voltage into current for the LEDs they're they're pretty efficient they're made uh, for people with 12 volt uh, systems like vehicles and stuff and um, so these little modules I don't uh, you know highly recommend them if you really like them though and can use them they they come attached to each other it's kind of a hassle to break them apart but um you know they're, they're still not bad you just gotta solder the wires on them and uh, they're pretty bright i think they were probably like 50 cents each when i bought like 20 of them i probably bought like 20 for uh, ten dollars and so on so in any case um again not uh an exciting circuit it's a simple switch circuit but um if you're switching 
you know, higher power loads than what a TO92 package can handle, which is closer to a half of a, a watt um, maximum, you know, you don't even want to push that. Um, this would be pushing it, you know, towards its limit right there. So, you know, um, just be aware of that. But in uh, any case, uh, that's really about it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.